namo jnanam today i will start with a very interesting topic that is the relationship of soul and the karmas with body you see that two things are there one thing is the soul and another thing is the karmas and the body the soul is a living matter living substance and the karmas are and the bodies are the non living substance so what is their relationship that is the very interesting thing which one should know about the combination of the soul and the body from the jain philosophy point of view and from the scientific point of view this thing i will discuss and i will tell about this thing according to the jain philosophy existence of living organism here the living organism means the mundana soul the yani the worldly soul ya sansari jeev here we are talking about with the sansari jeev and the we are not talking here with the liberated soul because the liberated souls are the free from the body and free from the karmas but on the mundana soul or the sansari jeev they have the combination of the soul that is the non physical substance and the physical matter that is the pudgal so living and the non living combinations we are discussed here from the jain philosophy point of view and from the scientific point of view the jiva being non physical and connection between the jeev and the material body is not direct but it is made through the karma's body it is believed that the scientific facts of the different schools of the thoughts can help in better understanding of some of the great question such as the relation between the soul and the body an attempt has been made to understand the combination of the jiva and the pudgal in scientific way this is a subject of research but some speculation can be made based on the different kinds of the birth regulatory mechanism of the dna bio photons concept and are bio concept are discussed here for understanding the relation between the soul and the body and the contraction and expansion property of the soul and their interactions with karmas this thing we will study and like to understand here in jain system the bodies are differentiated into five categories according to the uma swami in adhyay second tatvar sutra the odarik vakriya aharak tejas karmani karma karmanani sharirani means there are five kinds of the sharir according to the doctor according to the uma swami odar these five sharir the five bodies are the odarik sharir this is the physical body the vakriya sharir that is the fluid body and the aharak sharir that is the assimilative body and tejas sharir that is the electric body and the karmana sharir that is the karmic body so these five kinds of the sharir five kinds of the bodies are described in jain philosophy but such type of the difference are not seen in the biological science the science do not talk about all the five kinds of the sharir science only talk about the first that is the physical body which is made up of the cell tissues etc so human beings and the some human beings the sub human beings that is the therians the possess the odaric sharir according to the jain philosophy the manushya that is the human beings and the therians they possess the odaric sharir while the vakriya sharir are available in the uh, celestials that is the dev and the narki that is the helestials so in the helestial jeeves and in the uh, celestial jeeves the vakriya sharirs are there another is the aharak sharir tejas sharir and the karman sharir they are also available according to the jain philosophy here at present we will not discuss all this sharir only the odaric sharir which is related with the physical body and the science is dealing about only the odaric sharir the odaric sharir the body is constituted by the cells and their numbers vary from single cell to the billions of the cell in the science a unicellular organisms are also there only their body is consist of the one cell so the one cell is is 
performing all the activities like like the a complex human body we perform all the activities all the systems are there likewise in a single cell also all activities are going on and there the, the soul pradesh atma pradesh and the karmas are extended in each cell so billions of the cells are there in the body so in each cell in each part the atma pradesh the soul pradesh is there and the karmas are extended there the soul contract and expand to occupy the space of the body or changing according to the naam karma the naam karma out of the eight karmas one naam karma is there that is the body making karmas these body making karmas are responsible for the shape size of the organism so the all space in the body right from bottom to the top the atma pradesh are spreaded uh, everywhere so there is the life in the body so long as the soul is associated with it the body is said to be dead when the soul is departed so as far as the soul is there the we call it as a living man and when soul is departed we call it as a dead so as far as the characteristics of the souls are concerned the nine facts of the souls are described by acharya nemisan chandra in uh, dravya sangra a very popular scriptures jain scriptures that is the dravya sangra in which uh, acharya nemichan siddhan chakravarti has described and mentioned the nine specific characteristics of the soul jivo uva ogamo am amutto katta sadeha parinamo bhutta sansarotto siddho so visa so gai here the nine specific characters the facts of the souls are mentioned by the acharya nemisanda the jiva upayoga amurtik that is the formlessness karta that is the doer and swadesh parinamo swadesh sadeha parinamo and the bhokta and the uh, 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 sansari sitta and uh, siddha and vertical movement so these are the nine specific features Uh, described by the uh, nemichan siddhan vakti of the soul so here mainly i will discuss about the sadeha parinamo sadeha parinamo i will discuss mainly about the sadeha parinamo here the sadeha parinamo sadeha parinamo sadeha parinamo means the the soil contract and expand according to the space of the body or the changing according to naam karma so the sade parinamos means the atma pradesh are there according to the shape and size of the body if shape and size of the body is long the atma pradesh will be the long and if the shape and size of the body is short the atma pradesh will be the short but number is not increasing or decreasing the soul has the innumerable atma pradesh the innumerable atma pradesh will remain same or remain constant from generation to generation and from organism to organism if the ant has the same number of the atma pradesh as the elephant is having or the human beings have the same number of the the atma pradesh as the other organism is having so the atma pradesh remains same if a single cellular body is there the atma pradesh will be also innumerable and if a million billions of the cell is there the same number of the atma pradesh will be there so these are the some of the examples which i have put here that is a unicellular amoeba a animal it is made up of the one cell only so all innumerable atma pradeshs are there in the amoeba this is the animal similarly in plants you see that a innumerable atma pradesh is there in a singular a body a clematomonas in the plant this is the plant and this is the animal this is composed by a single cell and all the vital activities are going on in this singular organism as we have in the higher complex body organism in if you see the bacteria it is also a single uh, cell the bacteria is also you know, possess the same property as the amoeba and the clematomona have similarly you see that the influenza virus the virus is also a single cell structure so this is you can very well understand that how a single cell has the innumerable atma pradesh and how a, a complex body which is having the billions of cell and a very complex uh, tissue system it is you see that very well you can understand from these examples say the soul pradesh that is atma pradesh and the karmas 
extended up to the size of the body that what i have told you told you that they are extended according to the size of the body and this can be well understand and illustrated by knowing the three kinds of the birth described by the achar uma swami in tatvar sutra if we understand the different kind of the birth then we can very well understand the contraction and expansion property of the atma pradeshes samuchan garbha pado pada janma but there are three kinds of the birth described by the uma swami that one is the spontaneous generation it is known as the samuchan janma another is the uterian birth that is the garbha janma and third is the instantaneous rise that is upapad janma the spontaneous generation and the uterian birth both are exactly same as we have seen in the modern biological sciences in the modern biological sciences the samuchan jan i will just come in the next slide that spontaneous generation that is the samuchan jan is taking place in the biological sciences the description is well defined there a uterian birth is also well described here it is the same as in case of the jain philosophy but the instantaneous rise that the upad janma which is taking place upad janma in the celestials that is the dev in the heavens this kind of birth is there but the so science is very silent about the instantaneous birth it, it is, science is not talking about the instantaneous birth that is the upad janma because science do not describe the dev and the narakis They, they they do not have any kind of the concept of the dev or the swarg or the narak the hellish concept it is not available in the science so these three kinds of the births provide different birth places we know that in jain philosophy 84 yonis are there where the birth is taking place so all these three types of the birth it is taking place under the 84 lakhs yoni a 84 lakh yoni what we call so this is kind of the birth if we understand the birth now i will describe each and everything in very in a in a short way that is the spontaneous generation how this spontaneous generation is taking place in in jain philosophy from one sense to fourth sense organism this kind of the birth is a rule from one sense to the fourth sense organism so all living organisms which are of one sense ekendri what we call to the chaturindri char indri so from one sense to the fourth sense a, this spontaneous kind of the birth is there and uterian birth that is in the higher organisms where there is a fusion of male and female gamete fusion of the raj or vir what we call it is a uterian birth and this give rise a uterian birth fusion of the male and female gamete in higher organisms and it is taking place in panchendri ji of five sense to organism higher or org- org- or jump like the example is the mammals and reptiles and all we also include in this uterian birth and all kinds of the reptiles are also there so in ut- uterian birth so this uterian birth is are again of the three category just i will come later on so, so this uterian birth is taking place uh, uh, here in science as well as in uh, jain philosophy in spontaneous generation what you will see that the accumulation of favorable pudgal or the matter from all around to constitute body organs and are called the spontaneous generation there is the accumulation of under the favorable drukshetra and kal so whatsoever the migratory soul is there when the migratory soul uh, f- find a suitable uh, drukshetra and kal wow that migratory soul will play, took place there and the new uh, young new uh, individual birth will taking place there so from all around it is taking the place by the migratory soul the migratory soul will collect all the favorable dravakshetra kal and pav and all pudgals favorable pudgals are accumulated and in that accumulated the, the migratory soul will took place there and the uh, birth will taking place of this of any organism so this is a spontaneous generation and it is taking place from one sense to the of uh, four sense organisms and uterian birth is in a higher organisms like the mammals and reptiles as i have told you and upad janma is taking place in the celestials and hellish that what i told you just now 
and this kind of birth is taking place there in which the direct young ones is co coming from the saya upad saya what we call it upad saya the birth place is called the upad saya so from upad saya a direct young one is coming out or uh, that is the devas celestials etc they took the birth in the form of the directly young ones but here in the uterian birth and spontaneous the direct young ones are not not there a small child is coming out from the embryo here and that will develop gradually and gradually but this type of the thing is not there in case of the instantaneous rise first two kind of the birth are also in accordance with the biological science but there is no explanation of of science about the instantaneous rise just as what i have told you just now now the predominantly the three kinds of the reproduction uh, or multiplication or birth in biological sciences if we go towards the science then we will observe that as far as birth is concerned the three kinds of the birth is described in the biological sciences that is the vegetative reproduction what we call and asexual reproduction and the sexual reproduction as i have just told you that vegetative reproduction and asexual reproduction they comes under the category of spontaneous rise samuchan jan and sexual reproduction is come comes under the uterian birth here the sexual reproduction the union or fusion of the male and female gamete is taking place fusion of the raj or vir is taking place so it is the same concept as in the uh, jain philosophy and vegetative reproduction and asexual reproduction comes under the category of samuchan janma and there is no explanation about the of uh, upad janma or instantaneous rise in the science so first to cover in spontaneous generation samuchan janma and the third word comes under the uterian birth again uterian birth is comes under the three categories that is the jarayuj andaj or the potaj potaj so this sexual reproduction three categories are there and these three categories are also well defined in biological sciences because if you see that a jarayuj means the on the embryo on the embryo there is a one embryonic membrane is there and this embryonic membrane protect to the uh, protect to the fetus inside the uterus so a, a around the uh, fetus a membrane is there this is known as the embryonic membrane and this is known as the jarayuj kind of the birth under the type of the birth in which you see that in case of the birds and in case of the reptiles the the fetus or is in the and the calcareous cell anda what we called anda or the, it is by the calcareous cell is there and in the calcareous cell the fetus is protected there and as in reptiles and you can see in many of the uh, uh, birds the under type of the birth is taking place and potage in which there is no embryonic layer the direct uh, the fetus uh, young one the direct the birth is taking place and it is not covered by the uh, embryonic membrane so the three kinds of the birth uterian birth are described in the uh, jain philosophy as well as in the uh, biological science also there so both the uh, are in accordance with the science and uh, uh, jain philosophy science is silent about the instantaneous rise as just i have told you now with some examples very beautiful examples you can understand the contraction and expansion property of the soul soul has the contraction and expansion property and you can say that's how the the uh, adam pradesh is shifted from one one organism to the another organism see in some of the horticultural crops and in agricultural crops the birth can very well visualize or in, un, understand in agricultural science popularly multiplication of the horticulture fruits and flowering plants here you see that a grafting is technique the, nowadays this technique grafting layering cutting budding these are the various ways in horticulture crops for the multiplication and a great level of commercialization is there nowadays and a new new varieties and new new kinds of the fruits are developed you can see here say so in case of the grafting what we are what a scientist is doing or what a farmer is doing say this is the one plant this is known as the root stock plant and this is the shorn this is the another twig of the, of the another another plant so if we are shifting a twig of another plant to this plant so the cut end of the another plant is shifted here 
put together and it is wrapped with the wax after some time you will say that both are combined together so here this is a different plant their atma pradesh is different this atma pradesh are different so when we join together so they will mix together here here in this case so the two types here in this case you see that this when this this has the two souls what this stock rot has the one soul its own soul and this shown this is another soul so in this one two souls are there in and both uh, have the different categories so here the migratory soul took place uh, and <coughs> start growing on the stock and complete uh, its uh, paryapti so uh, whenever it enters uh, put here and it completes its paryapti same is the case <coughs> you can see here the grafted this is shown and this is stock the both both have the separate Adhm Pradesh. The Adhm Pradesh of this is separate, and Adhm Pradesh of this is separate. When these two are joined together, and a new plant will form here. So, on a say, say this is the plant of a very, uh, you can say, a local type of the plant, and this is the branch of a very improved type of the plant. So, when we transplant this to here, so that the improved uh, fruit and are are produced from the uh, this. Uh, so, this is the one of the way of. grafting what in horticulture you can see here a, a very interesting example you can again understand in nowadays in usa professor someone has produced a 40 different kinds of the fruit on a same plant on one plant 40 different kinds of the fruits they have uh, grafted here they have uh, transplanted here on this case so on the same one plant one stock plant 40 different kinds of the plants they have shifted here so on one plant 40 different souls are there because their properties are different so this thing we can very well understand here this is another you can very well understand that this is the stock and this is the shorn shorn means the we are shifting here so this is the stock plant we can we can we may call it as a mother plant so on this mother plant this shorn is shifted here when this are cut here and joined together after joining we cut this the cut from here so from this a, a new plant will form so which have the original uh, nutrient etc water will supplied from this and a new uh, flower or fruit can be developed uh, from this so this is a very interesting uh, case of the soil now this is a good tea in uh, in horticulture of the good tea is another method in which we remove the bark of from here and we put a uh, some soil or some moss grass here and put moisture here after some time some root is developed here on this end some root is developed when the root is developed this portion is cut and the, this portion will give you a new plant so these are the different uh, procedure of the gutti formation now see that in horticulture of the layering is also one of the procedure in which that this plant the branch twig is there it is turned and put under the soil and you see that from this point some root is developed and when the root is developed this portion is cut and it give rise to new plant so it when the root is developed it, it will cut from here and new plant is formed similarly you can say in the in sugar cane the different cuts are there and the, each cut will give you a new plant here this is all or comes under the vegetative reproduction or samuchan jan this all or comes under the samuchan jan category now you see that in the sprouting of the seed what we do are doing the seed germination or what a farmer is doing when a dry seed is put under the moisture and under optimum temperature condition and op optimum oxygen condition you see that the seed will imbibe seed will absorb the moisture and a favorable condition will comes to the migratory soul and migratory soul will took place here in the seed and you see that a new young ones are come out so the, this is all the cases where the under the favorable condition is required for the shifting of the migratory soul uh, to that particular place of samuchanjan so the sprouting in the seeds are a example of the spontaneous rise you can very well see here a, a detail and large uh, picture is mentioned here the seed is put in the soil and moisture oxygen that will it will germinate here when the optimum condition is there the soul will come and took place here here the, this this seed 
this seed will uh, obtain a favorable dravakshetra kalyan bhav so migratory soul will come and took place here and that immediately the sprouting will takes place whenever the migratory soul come here the the sprouting will start and then the lower portion will, will develop into the root and upper portion will come the convert into the shoot so this is known as the radical and this is known as the plumule and radical and plumule and it will give rise to new plants so this is the example of spontaneous uh, a birth which is exactly similar to our uh, phys- uh, jain philosophy and the science now a tissue culture technique uh, we are doing the in the laboratory the tissue culture techniques is nowadays very well developed here in this case the tissues are converted into the plant so this is the plant healthy plant this is a healthy plant from this healthy plant some tissues somatic tissues vegetative tissues we are taking in a petri dish this is tissues we are taking and put in a petri dish or no when we are putting in a petri dish under agar agar medium so the migratory soul will took place here in this in this tissue the migratory soul will took place here because the, this is the condition a favorable dravakshetra kal and pav when the dra- favorable dravakshetra kal and bhav is there the migratory soul which is having the nam karma of that that plant nam karma of that plant will enter and took place here whenever it took place here immediately the multiplication of the cells will takes place and ultimately it will multiply and convert into the new young ones new seedling will develop and this new seedling will then transfer into the pod and the new plant will form so this is the tissue culture technique is also example of spontaneous birth or spontaneous generation samuchan jan so all this agriculture horticultural crops and the modern technology for the which we are commercializing nowadays it is the example of a spontaneous generation and as i have pointed out that the spontaneous generation is taking place from one sense to the four sense so one sense means all plants they are are one sense a kendri jeev they are stavar jeev a kendri jeev so in this case we are commercializing this technique uh, to a great extent uh, in in our uh, science purpose now according to the bens ben, jain philosophy also the adhya pradesh has a very important property of contraction expansion as i have told you that this can we, we can very well understand by the kidney transplanting or the organ transplanting and the blood transfusion but you can uh, i would like to draw your attention that this is the patient recipient patient have the diseased or you can say a diseased kidney and the donor have the healthy kidney so when a healthy kidney is transferred to the recipient to the patient when it transferred when kidney is removed from here as soon as the kidney is removed the adhya pradesh will squeezed out adhya pradesh will contract because the adhya pradesh has the property of contraction and expansion so as soon as this kidney is removed as soon as this kidney is removed it's and uh, come out the arm pradesh will squeeze and come its main body come to the don- donor body again and when this kidney will shifted here the arm pradesh of this recipient will merge here and it will function normally like this so arm pradesh have the contraction expansion so due to this contraction property the whenever we remove the kidney the the kid- kidney uh, the arm pradesh and the kidney of the donor parent or the healthy parent will contract and when at the time of removal when it removes the kidney becomes the uh, 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 without adhya pradesh and when this is shifted to the uh, recipient or to the patient then the adhya pradesh of the patient will merge here in this case and this kidney will function normally and this diseased kidney uh, is a, is a failure so either it is removed or it is kept as such whatsoever the according to the uh, surgeon's requirement so this kidney will be transferred so uh, it will function normally same thing is in blood transfusion when as soon as the blood is in our body all adhya pradesh is are there in the blood blood cells blood cells are the living ones and each cell has as i told you each cell has the uh, property of uh, uh, adhya pradesh so in the blood cells when it is with the donor parent blood cells are in the adhya pradesh but when we remove the blood from the donor parent the the uh, in in the bottle uh, whatsoever the blood is there it is without adhya pradesh without adhya because adhya pradesh is contract uh, contraction the adhya pradesh will uh, come in the uh, main uh, donor parent 
So in the bottle, blood, whatsoever the blood is there, that that blood is without Adhana Pradesh. And when it is blood is transfused to the healthy to the patient, as soon as the blood goes inside that, the Adhana Pradesh of that patient will merge to that, and it will uh, work like the normal blood here. Now here you can say a very interesting example of the contraction and expansion in the wall lizard. Uh, you are all are well familiar with this wall lizard, which we in commonly we call it as a chipkali. Increase in the size and length in all living organism reflect the contraction and expansion property of the Adhana Pradesh. At the time of birth, the length is very small and increasing gradually. When a child born, at that time you say that is. Its length is about one feet or so, but when it becomes young one or it becomes adult, the 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 height is about six point five feet or or more than that. So the same Atma Pradesh which was there in the child or which was there in the fetus in the embryo, the same Atma Pradesh will extend it and increase it so gigantically. So in elephant you see that the same number of the innumerable Atma Pradesh is there in the elephant. and the same number of the atma pradesh is there in a in a unicellular amoeba or in a unicellular chlamydomonas so see that at what extent this property you can understand here and but in you can see that this in accident the wall lizard here i would like to explain that this is the wall lizard by accident sometimes you will observe that the tail is bracked the breaking is take place by accident what you will observe that the tail will jump Up and down, up and down for some time. After that, it becomes stagnant. Why they stopping? Because the tail will start jumping as long as the Adhana Pradesh is there in the tail. As soon as the Adhana Pradesh contract and come in the main body, and the tail part without Adhana Pradesh, it will be considered as a dead because no Adhana Pradesh is there. So as long as Adhana Pradesh is there, it will jump up and down and up and down, and when the Contraction because the Adhana Pradesh has the contraction and expansion property. So when the Adhana Pradesh will contract and comes in this main body, then the 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 that that tail will be without Adhana Pradesh, so it is the dead. So we can you can understand very well that the how the contraction and expansion is taking place here. Same thing you can see in the cock, in the hen, Murgi. When we cut the neck of the hen, the it will so they start making the noise for some time, and after that the noise will stop because the, as far as the Adhana Pradesh is there in the in the in the head portion of the cock. It will start making the noise, but as soon as the Adhana Pradesh will remove from the head, it will start stop the making the noise. So this is the relationship between uh, this thing. You can understand the the information of body making karma is transferred. Now I am coming to some scientific aspect here. The information of body making karma is transferred to DNA is through is also. Uh, substantiated by the jacob and monard operation system of regulatory system now i am coming with the some jain philosophy in accordance with the with the science the dna according to the science dna is the whole and whole, whole and sole thing the dna is considered as a supreme dna is considered as a boss with everything is controlled by the dna so now how we correlate the function of the dna with the karmas and with the soul this i would like to explain you in a brief and you try to understand this thing dna has the key role in the deciding the architecture construction and the operation of the body according to the jain philosophy the architecture and the plan of construction is contained in the body making karmas All the body making karmas, you know that there are forty-two body making karmas are there. Nam karma, which which is comes under the agatya karma. In a, this is so the body making karma or the nam karma, which are responsible for all architecture, construction, shape, size, body. All things are there, which are under the control of the body making karma, nam karma. And DNA or science say that everything is controlled by the DNA. So no, I would like to correlate. the nam karma with the dna and what is the scientific model which is related with this the this means that the information from the body making karma is transferred to dna as per our the assumptions the what is the information is there what is the uh, information is the dna that information in the dna is controlled by the karmas 
This means that the information of the body, <coughs> body making karma is transferred to DNA. Whatever the information is there in the nama karma, when the migratory soul comes and the migratory comes with the nama karmas, migratory soul uh, whenever enter and took place birth, at that time the nama karma is playing the role here and these nama karmas control the function of the DNA. This is the concept which we, one should like to understand. So transfer to the DNA of the zygote. Zygote means that means that when male and female unite together, raj or viri then fuses together, a body is formed, a deployed body is to form, which is known as the zygote. So this zygote, when the when the uh, nama karma is transferred to the zygote, the functioning will start. The paryapti is con uh, is concerned with this transfer process. I will not go in detail about the paryapti for this a se separate lecture will be there. So a paryapti is concerned with this transfer process. How this happened is not immediately clear. How this, this, this information is transferred from karma to the DNA, this is not very much clear, but we have some speculation. As a scientist, we have some speculation and we try to correlate the various models, genetic models with this uh, gene philosophy. We have studied the gene philosophy, we have studied the uh, biological science, we have studied the functioning of the DA. So we would like to correlate this thing, that how the gene philosophy is correlated with the biological sciences, with the correlated with the genetics. The, bio, the one strong possibility is that happens through the biophotons also. Biophotons have been found to have a crucial role, crucial role in regulating the biochemistry and biology of life. Evidence suggests that biophotons originate from a coherent electromagnetic field in DNA. It is assumed that the shedding carbon organage from biophotons in DNA and the biophotons so form carry the information of the shedding karma. The intelligent action supposed to be performed by DNA is because of the intelligence of the shedding karma transmitted through biophotons. Now this is a very interesting model, Jacob and Monard model, which I would like to correlate here because all the DNA, the DNA, entire length of the DNA is not functioning. Because here in this, this is the length of the DNA in which some part of the DNA is a structural gene which is a functional, another part is a operational gene and th third part is the regulatory gene. So the R is the regulatory part, O is the operation operator part and uh, this is the Y is the structural part. So in the entire length of the DNA we divide into the three categories, one is the structural gene, another is the operator gene and third is the regulatory gene. So the regulatory gene, which regulate the entire activity of the structural gene. A structural gene which we regulate because this structural gene, DNA, what we call it DNA, it has, it possesses the genetic information in a triplet code, which I will explain you just later on. Though this structural gene has the genetic information in, in coded form and it will synthesize the messenger RNA. So whatever the information is there with the structure gene in the DNA, it is transferred to the messenger RNA. This is known as the translation. Translation here, it is transferred to mRNA. And this messenger RNA will synthesize the protein, hormones and all the things according to the need of the body. So what here, what assumption we are having, what we assume that we are not Kavli Bhagwan because the karma are not visible to us. The science is unable to capture the karmas. Science is unable to capture the soil. We under the very even high electronic microscope, we are unable to see the karmas. So the karmas are so so small. It is it is beyond our knowledge. Only the Kavli Bhagwan omniscient knows about the working system of the of the DNA or working system of the karmas. So what we assumption as a scientist, what we assume that the karmas. Whenever it comes to the migratory soul, it will come and took place here on the regulatory gene R, what we call. And here it regulate at, as, as and when this regulatory gene, when the fruiting of the karma is there, when the karma udai is there, at the time of the karma udais, you, the, this regulatory gene, they will work and it will function here and the operator gene will switch on. This operator gene is working as a switch on or off switch. So when the karma is operating and comes here, the switch will on whenever a particular thing is required for the body, whenever there is a fruiting of the karmas, when there is a udai of the karmas, 
at the time that thing will happen so according to that the structural gene you can see here that will synthesize the messenger rna what we call it as a messenger rna and this messenger rna will synthesize the protein here so the structural gene will synthesize messenger rna and messenger rna will synthesize the protein enzymes hormones whatever you call it is that so this is just a diagrammatic representation of the functioning of the regulatory gene structural gene and operator gene as per the jacob and monard a german scientist in 1960 so here this is just a correlation a just a assumption a speculation but i we are not sure that it happens like this because because we are not omniscient and the karmas are not well known to us so this is the one thing which i have explained here now the one thing which i would like to explain here that the in the laboratory watson and crick has synthesized in 1950 the artificially they have synthesized the dna so dna has they have artificially synthesized the dna double helical structure of the dna this is the double helical structure of the dna and this watson and crick they have synthesized the dna double helical structure of the dna but what's dna is the artificial they are able to synthesize the dna but it 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 are unable to function because for the functioning of that dna the karma and the soul is required so in the laboratory the science scientists are not able to synthesize the soul or not able to synthesize the karma so dna is just model they have prepared according to the uh, configuration according to the bio biochemistry they have synthesized the, the dna but that dna is non functional for the functioning of the dna the soul and the karma is required so the, the, what thing is that the karma so what we we inference we can draw that for the controlling of the dna for functioning of the dna the karma and souls are required so this is a, you can say we can inference we can draw here dna so synthesized artificially by them was unable to function like normal functioning in living being because due to absence of the soul and karma which are held responsible for controlling all activities of living beings so in dead cells no activity of the dna is seen so dead cells do not have functional dna so whenever you can say that the soul is departed from any body it will be considered as a dead why it is dead because it is because because the soul and the karma soul is not there that's why the the the, the dna is unable to function so for so our functioning of the uh, 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 bodies the uh, soul and the karma is essential and the required so this is a, a brief construct uh, biochemical structure of the you can see of the dna dna dn this is a, a chemical structure of the dna which is a dna is actually you can see a chain of the nucleotide a polymer chain of nucleotide which is made up of the deoxyribose sugar and the, you can see that a phosphorus and you see the nitrogenous base so, so this is the purine and pyrimidines purines and pyrimidines they are nitrogenous base so four kinds of the nitrogenous base are there adenine cytosine thymine and guanine and their pairing is taking place between adenine and thymine and cytosine and guanine so this is the you can say the configuration of the dna nucleotide chain here so you can very well understand this so two strand is there this is the one strand of the dna and uh, this is another strand of the dna and the you, the two strand of the dna they will come together and they are complementary to each other and in this way the dna is functioning so uh, uh, this is you can say that a diagrammatic representation how the protein is synthesized the enzymes is synthesized because these are double helical is just a diagrammatic representation uh, you can see that triplet code is there according to triplet code this is the messenger rna is synthesized and this messenger rna goes on the ribosomes and you can say that the transfer rna have, uh, have a, a amino acids and a chain of amino acid is formed and a peptide bond is formed and chain of amino acid will form the hormones enzyme synthesis and these hormones enzyme synthesis according to the need the architecture or architect of the body is to be formed so this is all about the, this thing and this is the, the genetic information contained in the dna is in a triplicated code what this a triplicate code is there and the, and it is transferred to the messenger rna this phenomena is known as the transcription and the synthesis of specific kind of the protein is called the translation so this is all about in brief about today's uh, discussion uh, next time we will come with another interesting topic thank you very much jai janendra